Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today we are going to continue on with our video series of taking the Prime 1 Green Lantern statue and converting it into the, my own personal grail, Genesis Vale Captain Marvel. Now if you watch my past videos, we pretty much did all the sand work, the chopping, and all the custom work. And since the last video, I pretty much uh, got them all fine-tuned and smoothed out and he's ready to go. Now, this project has been delayed a little bit for a couple of reasons. These statues are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, my old airbrush boost system was just so outdated. It was going on me and I couldn't handle a lot of the bigger stuff. So what I decided is since the winter came so fast, I didn't want to run into the garage and heat up the garage just to paint them up. I wanted to wait until after the winter for the spring to build a new airbrush boost system. So if you guys are interested on seeing how this uh, whole system was built, uh, link the video in the description. I went all out so I can actually house a lot more bigger stuff and I get a better airflow of getting out paints and dust and uh, fumes out of my studio now. So this is actually going to be the first project of painting in this booth. So it's kind of like the whole christening of the booth, which is, should be pretty cool. So we're going to focus on mainly his uh, body now. We're going to focus on the figure in this video. And then the last video is probably when we'll finish up the base and then he'll pretty much be done. So... In my past uh, Captain Marvel paint-ups, I've always used regular Createx Pearlized Blue. Uh, it was a really great blue, it worked out fine, but you would sort of have to heat set it with a blow dryer. Uh, I sort of discovered their uh, Wicked Colors a lot lately, I've been trying some of them, and I really wanted to test out the Wicked Colors uh, Pearlized Blue on another item, and I really love how it works, so I'm going to stick with the Wicked Colors for now on from Createx, where I feel that their regular uh, Createx paints are not really great for statues. Uh, their Wicked Colors White is amazing, their Pearlized Blue is great, and I just got to try some other colors, so that's kind of a little bit of a tip if you guys are uh, using Createx paints, try their Wicked, it's really good. So. With Captain Marvel, he's basically a cosmic character. So we're going to do pearlized blue all over the body, which is pretty much from the waist down and then up here upwards and his hands. Once that's done, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do a uh, blue uh, op opaque from Badger Colors in there. This is a really deep blue. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll mix some of that blue with one of these golden uh, blacks here, whether it's shading gray or the carbon black, and get some deep blacks in his uh, muscle areas and stuff, because uh, when you see Captain Marvel in the uh, comic books from Janice Vale, when he was Captain Marvel, all those deep black lines had sort of like the space uh, stars and stuff in him from the cosmic awareness, so that's kind of what we got to follow for this paint-up. So... Once that's done, we're going to get into the reds, which I'm debating, do I go with my old uh, chrome silver and uh, Tamiya red on him, or do we go with a little bit something different this time, and we'll maybe do uh, Spaztec uh, chrome uh, silver and their Spaztec red on top, which might look pretty cool, and then we might try the Spaztec uh, gloss uh, acrylic on him to really make him shine compared to the Duplicolor car paint. So we might try something a little bit different and really make him pop a little bit more. So uh, let me get set up. We'll start painting up the blue. Uh, it's pretty much straightforward. I've done a couple videos in the past like this, but so as I said, we'll focus on him in this video. And next video, we'll finish up the base and the clear hand, and then he'll be ready to put put on my shelf. Okay, so it's pretty much done. Off camera, I went in and I touched up the face a little bit with some extra pearls to kind of pop out the cheek a little bit, the nose, the top of the eyebrows, and the mouth and stuff. So I just had to do that off camera. I worked out the neck a little bit too. Uh, 
So I went over him one more time also with some of the Badger Blue darkened up some of the other areas. And one of the things I had to do off camera though is because he's such at an angle, it's one thing that you can't forget. I had to actually pop him out, hold him upside down, and work out the bottom of him with some paints. And that was a little bit tricky because uh, the airbrush is not getting under there in this direction. But he's pretty much done in the sense of all the blue is uh, ready to go. What I think I'll do is let this dry for a day or two. I'll really let it cure because i got to handle him when I'm doing the red. So I want to make sure that, you know, I can actually handle him without anything coming off or scraping anything. The blue is actually easy to repair, even if I scrape it. Uh, the red is the tricky part, because if you mess up the red, you screw up everything. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the Wicked Colors uh, paints dry fairly fast. Like, they're white. I love their white. And you can see that this is dried, and I'm not really getting any residue on my fingers. Whereas the regular Createx Pearlized Blue... Even though it's like dries fairly fast within like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, especially in like a day or two, sometimes when you rub it, you almost kind of mess it up and you get some kind of extra residue. Uh, but the Wicked Colors really does and it's a really good blend. So I'm going to think about this for a day or so. I want to do something with the boots. I got to remember what I did on my File of Veil Custom. Uh, I have to go back to her uh, tonight and look at it and see what I did because I remember the boots or at least the part that was on her boots I I hit it with something like either a little bit of a different pearl or maybe an alclad just to make it sort of pop a little bit different from the rest of the item just to give her a little bit of variation so I kind of want to copy the same thing so we're gonna let them cure out for a day or two we'll come back I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with the boots and then what we'll do is we'll set up a day where I could really mask them off and work out the red once I pretty much get the red situated and I'm happy with where it's at. It's just a matter of speckling him out and then uh, working out the star and the hair. And that's the easy stuff. Right now, this red is the tricky part. I save the red for after the blue because I don't want to mess up the red. Because the process of red, if you screw it up, scratch it or something, it's messed up. Even though you could get away with it with a Genesis Veil because he has a speckling and star effect, you could kind of maybe repair it. Whereas if you were going to do a whole figure of like a metallic red, uh, you really can't do that because if you scratch it, it's really ruined. So, but with him, you got a little bit of a room forever. So we're gonna let him cure up. We'll be back and we'll get this uh, red attached soon. Okay, we're gonna start painting up uh, the red on his outfit, and I'm gonna do something different compared to the other times I've done videos and painted up Captain Marvels. We're gonna use Spastic paints instead, and for a couple reasons. My old process was I would do Tamiya Chrome Silver base, which uh, you can see pretty much there. And then once I do the chrome silver, I would go in with a black paint really deep in the areas because you got to create that star field to make it look like the comic book look, just like how I did with the legs and everything else. And then once that's done, I would do Tamiya clear red on top of it. Now the clear red, you have to spray it really thick. It's not a clear red where you do a near light coat and you build another light coat. Because even if you keep doing that, it creates more of a pinkish cloud. You got to do something really thick to make it really like that clear with the Tamiya. Now the only problem with doing that is uh, you start to create a sort of dusting in certain areas. Now, now that I built a new airbrush booth, I probably wouldn't get as much dusting, but I still think you would get more. Because if you spray it with the airbrush in this direction, you get that nice good coat here, but what happens is you get a little bit of a whirlwind and you get some dusting underneath the arm here. Then when you spray it in this direction, you'll probably get a nice good flow coming out there, but I don't want to create that dusting anymore. I'm trying to get away from that. So the Tamiya kind of works if the item is kind of spread apart, but when you have an arm bent like that, you create a dusting in there. And it, I mean, it'll go away if you're careful and you know how to sort of, you know, maybe put a piece of cardboard under here and spray the arm so you don't get that dusting. But if you can really work it, you can get away from that dusting. But I find that the Tamiya stuff, uh, the clear red sort of gives me that issue. Um, even if you create the dusting and you let it dry, you can sort of wipe it away and you can kind of get away with cleaning it up. But and especially when you do the clear coat on top of it later, you really pull it away. But I want to try the Spastec stuff now instead. The other problem I have is when you do the chrome silver, even if you let the chrome silver stay for like dry for a day or two, and then you do a really nice thick coat of the clear red on top of it, what it does is it seems like the red sort of kind of reacts to the silver a little bit. And the bottom part of the red sort of stays wet, but the top of the red starts to cure faster. And then I made a mistake one time where I let it cure for like a, maybe like, you know, eight hours. And later that night when I went to touch it, I sort of kind of pulled it. And what it felt was the silver sort of stayed wet, but the top candy coat cured on me faster. And the bottom part didn't cure. So 
I would always have to really let it cure up for a day or two before I was able to go back into it. Um, and especially do my clear coat at the end. So I find that the Tammy stuff works well, but you gotta really kind of play with it and let it cure for a few days before you start messing with it and literally let it like cure. But I've been using Spaztec paints for a while on some other projects and I sort of like the way Spaztec works a little bit better because it seems more durable because this stuff is kind of made for like, you know, those RC cars, even the gas cars where that stuff is really not supposed to mess with the, the paints too much. So the Spastec stuff is really great. But it's the same exact process as Tammy, except I'm just using Spastec color. So what I'm gonna do is out of a, uh, you know an airbrush, I have Silver Metallic, uh, which is pretty much the same thing as the Chrome Silver. There's really not much of a difference. And then, you know, I have a Spastec uh, Black, Gloss Black, which is, you know, I could do the deep shading areas. And then I have a can of uh, Candy Apple Red, which is a clear coat red and then I also have it for an airbrush because this way I can sit here with the spray can and spray it because this stuff when you first spray it it looks like a mess and then after you spray it with a layer or two you really blends together and you get that really nice candy look and uh, if I can't get the spray can in any areas I can go in with the airbrush and I can get in there with the airbrush under certain areas and it'll all come together I've done this on a couple other items and it works out pretty well now you can use mirror chrome if you want that mirror chrome look, but the problem is, is the mirror chrome would look like, you know, like a bicycle. If you ever seen those anodized aluminum, shiny red bicycle type of bars, that's what the mirror chrome would turn into. This creates more of a speckling look where you get more of like a superhero type outfit, and that's what I'm going for. And then once all that's done, and this red cures up, and I take all my masking off, and then I do my uh, yellow star, I do my eyes, I do the hair, then after everything's done, I'm going to use a Spastec Ultra Shine Clear Coat Acrylic Enamel, which is 90109. And this stuff is really amazing. Um, it goes on really well. I've really never seen this stuff react to anything. But the only thing I've noticed though is you've got to do one good clear coat in your first try and really let it cure. I think you could go back a day later or two and do another coat. But I've always really kind of just did one good clear coat or really like within a half hour type thing and let it sit. Now this stuff really makes it look shiny. It really makes it durable because this stuff is per for much like nitro fuel protector. Which is like I guess uh, you know those RC cars when you do your car paint you put this on there. And any of that nitro fuel or those fumes come out don't ruin your paint. This protects it. So this stuff is really good. Um... So like I said, I haven't really seen this react to too many paints, especially these acrylic paints. It works great over the clear red. It works great over the chrome silver. I've seen it work great over the uh, uh, Alclad uh, pale gold. Uh, but I've seen this sort of react to Alclad like chrome or the AK Interactive chrome. So, But that's kind of like, that's a whole nother process of something else. So this works great for a lot of acrylic paints and stuff. So I haven't had many reactions with it. The only thing I realized though is once I spray him down, I'll have to let him kind of cure for a day or two because this stuff sort of feels tacky to the touch after a while. But once it really cures up, it's just gold. It's just perfect. It's really nice. So this stuff is really great. This uh, stuff, uh, Duplicolor Clear Match, uh, you know, this clear coat stuff, this stuff dries to the touch in like 20 minutes, which I love this stuff because this is like if you're using it for a car paint. But, you know, it, it's kind of like a different process. I think if I put this stuff over all this, it reacts to it and kills the paint, whereas this one doesn't. But it still protects it pretty well. So that's where I'm at with this. So, like I said, if, you, if you're if you into Tamiya stuff and you like using it, it's fine. It's just that you got to really let it cure up and you can't really mess with it too much. Whereas the Spastic stuff seems to cure up a little bit faster. It gives a really nice blend. And I think it uh, should work out pretty well. One of the main reasons why I'm doing it with the Spastic for this item is because... To get him in and out of the base and everything, you got to sort of kind of grab him here and almost here. So if I have the Tamiya stuff, if you're not careful and you hit it with your fingernail, you ruin the whole paint. Whereas this clear red, once it's on there, it's kind of really durable. It really doesn't scratch. I mean, it can still scratch to your fingernail, but not as bad as the Tamiya will. So it's kind of cool. So this is something I'm going to start practicing more with these Spaz decks and hopefully they can uh, be a little bit more durable. So let me get Captain Marvel masked up. I'm probably going to mask him up. You know, uh, I'll probably put the, I'll probably even mask off the star a little bit because I want to make sure when I put this uh, gold, uh, you know, gold paint on here, it sticks. When you have the clear red on top of it, it might not hold for the long run. So I'll probably make sure I mask off the star. But I'll put Silly Putty all around here, pretty much do his top of his body, 
get it done, pull off all the masking, let it cure up for a couple days, come back, do my star field, and then once the star field's done, I can really uh, do my clear coat and go from there. So, a couple more steps, but we're pretty much almost there. Pulled off the masking and I'm really loving this red now. I really like the way this is work. I think for now on, whenever I do these type of latex or uh, cosmic type of reds, like for a Harley Quinn or this type of Captain Marvel, I'm going to start using the spastic more because I figure it's a little bit more durable. You get an easier coat and it's easier to work with. So uh, it's kind of like my new go-to paint I think for now on. Uh, but I really like the way this blue uh, from the Createx Wick Kit is really bouncing off this Spastic Red. It really looks nice. And I think once I uh, do the Starfield and Gloss Coat, it'll come together. But as right now, we got some flaking issues. And this happens any time when working with, uh, you know, clear coats on Silly Putty. And I knew this was going to happen when I was customizing it because I've been through it in the past. But I already knew what I was going to do with this item. So you can see there's a little bit of flaking coming over here. Basically, I'm going to let that dry for a day or two. I come back and I'll hit the flakes and they'll come right off. Because if I try to flake, the, pop these off, these flakes might fly up onto this paint and then they'll stick. You really need to let it cure for a day or two. Uh, you'll see a lot more flaking over here on the wrist here. So you can see there's a lot of flaking going on over there. What happened is, is uh, when I put the Silly Putty over there, probably some of it just, you know, when you pull it off, sometimes the red slides off the uh, chrome silver or sometimes it kind of flops backwards. So it, it probably was coming off easy, but since the Silly Putty sort of, kind of let me explain. So you have your paint and you have your silly putty on your knees. When you pull the silly putty out, these flakes sort of stay and then they flop backwards and then the silver underneath is kind of like showing over. But it's not the end of the world. Like I said, I knew this was going to happen and my whole goal was once this was done, I was going to either use a really dark red uh, black paint or just a black paint and go over these line works here. Just sort of to follow the comic book art a little bit and make the outfit pop a little bit more. So I'm going to let this dry for a day or two. I'll come back and I'll clean this up off camera. And then my next step is I'll probably have the eyes done already. Eyes are really simple. It's just putting in some like uh, silver metallic eyes on there to make them pop a little bit more. Uh, the hair we'll do later on. Uh, once I do the black lines, we're going to work out the star. Uh, then we have to work out the wristbands. Then uh, we have to do the star field first before we do the star. I think it's uh, better to... I don't know. I'll have to see. i got to plan it out. I'm, I'm kind of just all over the place at the moment. Uh, I will do, when I do the black lines on the outfit, I will put black lines in here or maybe some metallic silver lines in there. Just kind of these three little lines that I created. And then I might do something with the boots uh, where I mask them off and hit it with a light uh, outclad chrome just to make them pop a little bit more. Or I might leave them alone, I'm not really sure. I have to go back to the uh, Philo Veil custom I did. So I kind of want them a little bit uniform and close together in outfit wise. But we're moving along pretty fast now, and uh, hopefully uh, next step, maybe we'll do the star fields, or at least I'll have all the little tiny things done, and then we can do the star fields. Okay, so I'm going to start working on his star next on his chest, and uh, I figured it would be easier to do the star now, let it cure up for a day or two, and then I can mask the star off later, and I can do my speckling and create the star field all over his body, because... I have a funny feeling if I do the speckling now, and even if I let it dry for a day or two, and I start masking this off to do the star, one, I'll have a couple of speckling in there where I have to sand it anyway, uh, and two, uh, I have a funny feeling the Silly Putty might pull some of the speckling off of this spaz deck uh, here. So I'd rather do my speckling later, get everything I need to do, and then do my clear coat and seal it all together. Uh, so it's easier to do the star now. And then let that cure up for a day or two and then mask it off with some Silly Putty. And then I can do all my speckling and then I can just pull the Silly Putty right off and I'll have to worry about that being messed up. Because I did do a little bit of fine sanding on this just to kind of buff it out a little bit. Now, I want to make sure that my yellows are broken up on this item. I don't want this yellow paint here to be the same yellow paint as his bracelets and I don't want the same yellow being on the uh, clear base that's going to be behind him. So I want to break up all the yellows as well. So what I like to do for my Captain Marvels is use uh, 
metallic gold from Auto Air Colors, which is kind of like a Createx paint. I think it is Createx. I'm not really sure, but it's a really nice uh, gold. But the problem with this gold is to go over this blue, it'll take like 30 layers. And the problem is it'll bleed on you. Uh, and it'll just, it, it's just very thick painting things forever. So what I like to do is use titanium gold from Tamiya and basically just do one coat of this on there. It'll cover this uh, blue, like you won't even see any blue showing through. It goes really perfect over it because it's kind of like, you know, a chrome silver with a hint of yellow in it. And then after that, once that's kind of dried up, I'll hit it with some of this. I'll give it that nice, you know, um, cosmic uh, gold uh, pearlized uh, star on him and that'll work out pretty well. And then after I do uh, my star field and I have all this stuff done, even on the hands, I will be using pale gold from Alclad to do the bracelets. And uh, this is very dull gold, but once you shine it up with the spaz that clear, it really creates a nice, good, shiny, metallic gold, like almost looks like a real metal. So it's going to work great for the bracelets. And then uh, when I do the clear... Uh, yellow background I'll be using Spaztec uh, clear yellow on that so everything will be broken up and it won't be all uniform so I'm gonna get the star all set up sometimes what I like to do is I'll probably do it is I'll probably go in with a paintbrush first I'll do a little bit of trim around here just to kinda make life a little bit easier and then after that's dried I'll mask it off we'll come back we'll spray it get the star done let it dry for a few days and we'll start finishing it up now I might, I'm still debating on what I'm going to do with the boots. I got to look at my file of veil and see how I did hers because I think I uh, sort of gave it a hint of Alclad and I want to kind of keep him a little bit uniform to her when they're next to each other in my case. So I'll have to see. But let's get the star going first and then we'll keep plugging away. Okay, so we got brother and sister standing next to each other. Now, the reason why I popped out file of veil is because I wanted to make sure I sort of get the uh, look right and I want to make sure I'm getting like each character uniform I want them you know display next to each other so I don't want to do something crazy on Genesis and all of a sudden when I display them like ah, I didn't really match them that well so what I'm doing next is I'm getting ready to do my star field effect and it's very simple it's nothing complex I'm not a fan of overdoing the star field and what I mean by that is like a lot of artists that did 2d drawings of these characters when they were powered up into cosmic awareness uh, they would have like maybe planets, you would see planets in the darker areas and maybe a crazy bright star. And I think you'd get away with that with 2D art and I think it looks amazing. But for a 3D sculpt, I feel it's overkill. Because if you see like a planet in this dark area here or a crazy bright star here, and I feel that you look at that more than the character. And I kind of like just doing my own little take on what I did with Phyla. So basically it's really simple. You can kind of see how I did Phyla here. Now, I did sport a lot of like random stars all over, but I think it works really well like that, especially once you gloss it up. Uh, you know, it, it's I'm not overthinking it. You see like a couple stars here. Like, you know, I'll go back in with the airbrush and I'll just make one little star glow a little bit more. You know, nothing too crazy. And uh, you could kind of see down here. So with the, you know, really glossy paint, this brightens up and you sort of lose the stars that are here. And then in the black areas, you start to grab the stars. And then when you turn the character and you start changing the light a little bit, certain areas kind of like go away. And, you know, as long as you give it a nice good gloss coat, it looks pretty cool. So that's kind of like what I'm going for there. Uh, and I'm just going to match them. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. Uh, and then also, too, once I start working on the base, I have to pop her out. And I got to try to match up what I did here. I pretty much remember how I did it, but I'm going to try to match it up because I want them like, you know, exactly uniform. So uh, it's really easy though. It's not hard to do this as long as you take your time. What I do is I grab Wicked White, uh, you know, from Create Text. I really love this white. It works out really well. I'll put some white in here with a little bit of water and just a couple drops of alcohol in this water. And I'll mix it up. And I'll create it a little bit more of a milky uh, white than a really thick white, you know, kind of for the airbrush. Just a little bit that I can splatter it. And what I do is... You know, I take a toothbrush, whether it's a new one or old one, it doesn't really matter. And I'll have a piece of cardboard next to me. You know, I'll have a piece of cardboard over here. And what I do is uh, I'll put the, you know, I'll put the paint in here like this. And then I splurt it onto the cardboard. And then once I start seeing that I'm getting these really tiny little drops coming off the uh, paint, you know, toothbrush, I'll go on to Genis and I'll do the same on to him. And then when I feel that there's no paint coming off this anymore, I'll put it back in a cup, I'll spurt it back on the cardboard, and go from there. Um, you just have to be careful with certain ways. Like if you, uh, 
you know, with him going downwards, upwards, it works well. But if you have your paintbrush above him like this and you skirt down and you have too much paint on your uh, toothbrush, what will happen is you'll get really globs of nasty paint coming down and look weird. So you want to make sure the paintbrush is giving it a little bit of you know, speckling but nothing too crazy and you want to make sure you're not dripping anything in certain areas because it's kind of hard to hold this type of a heavy statue and go around and not mess it up with your hands because if you touch it and you smear it then you get all this nasty smearing all over so that's something you got to be careful of. But that's pretty much all there really is to it and then once that's done you just let it kind of cure for like a day just you know don't push your luck and then uh, tomorrow I could pretty much uh, kind of do the hair and uh, seal him up. Now, as far as the hair, what I did with her is I did a little bit more of a glossier hair on this one, and I did do some pearls in there, so I made her hair look a little bit more cosmic instead of just like a flat white. So I'll probably do the same thing with him a little bit too. I'll add a little bit of pearl in there, make it a little bit shiny, and just have some more fun with it. Now, uh, as far as his eyebrows and her eyebrows, I kept pure black because in the artwork, it was always uh, black, but if you do white, it'll look really weird. I, I did an experiment back in the day, it didn't work out. Um, as far as his boots go, uh, I looked at her boots and I realized I didn't do anything different. I thought I did something different with these, but I didn't. So I think everything's going to look fine the way they are. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. So I'll get this paint mixed up. We'll start doing the splatter effect. And then uh, from there, uh, we'll pretty much do the hair, seal them up. Finish the bracelets on his hands and the main figure should be done. Okay, so at this point, I'm happy with where the star field is, but of course, some parts, you know, I might have went a little too heavy, but it's really easy to take it down, especially on the red. So on the red, if you feel you went a little heavy, you can just like kind of lick your finger and just kind of take down some of the white in the areas that really shouldn't have a star field area on it. So you kind of just take it down a little bit and all that star field stays in there. You know, you could kind of take it down a little bit over here. Nothing much, just a little bit just where the bright reds are just to kind of capture that artwork that you would see from the comics you know a couple little extra random ones are not going to hurt but so this way you start to see it stays more in the blacker areas so you can kind of just take it down a little bit here but you have to do this sort of fast you can't really let it sit for a day or two then it might not come out but you know it works it's not the end of the world if you know you just kind of Wipe it down with a little bit of a saliva. You know, I, I ran it. I've done this plenty of times before, so so th that works out good. Now for the blue, it might work out well too. You never know, so you can kind of try. But when you're hitting pure, you know, like paint versus paint, it kind of sticks. But this is that really smooth paint, so it doesn't really work out. So what I'll do is I'll probably just mix up a little bit of a watered down pearlized blue, and I'll kind of just kind of highlight these areas again, just to kind of make those blues pop, so it doesn't it's not crazy like Starfield on it, but it works out pretty well. You really start to capture that whole look of the comic book art, uh, especially like up here. There's a you know there's like a spot over here on his mouth I don't like, and maybe around there I'll kind of hit it a little bit, take it down. Um, you know I'll still come around here with some areas. So that's why I say you got to be careful with. Uh, you know masking because if you did this uh, after you know if you did this first and then you do the star then when you pull the start and the masking off the silly putty you might pull it off of the smooth areas but not around those areas so it's a little bit tricky so I'm gonna go in and do that a little bit and then I'll come back and we'll probably just kind of highlight some of the blue areas tone down some stuff and then uh, pretty much uh, it's just to let it dry up for you know the day and come back tomorrow do the hair and uh, the bracelets
Okay, so I am pretty much ready to do my clear coat. What I did was I added larger stars in certain areas with the paintbrush and then I hit it with a uh, airbrush to kind of make it pop a little bit more in certain areas. So it's not just like a white dot and you can kind of see how they kind of pop out a little bit more. And that's as far as I like to go on my star field. I feel that that works out better for a 3D sculpt and that's kind of where I want it to be. So the next step is I will be using my Spaztec Clear. This is the 90109. It's the Ultra Shine Clear Coat Acrylic Enamel and it's the Fuel Protector. Uh, the stuff works out really great. I've used it on a lot of uh, you know paints in the past. Uh, as far as like acrylic paints and the Spaztec paints, it goes on very well. I do know that you need to let it dry for a few days because it sort of stays tacky, but then once it really cures up, it's really nice and it's nice and smooth. Um, I did run into a problem with this Spaztec Clear once. Um, it was a while back. What I did was I had a circle base for an item and I did my Alclad Chrome on that and then I used Alclad Clear Red, which is uh, like this paint right here. And I did it through the airbrush and it looked beautiful and it worked out great. And I said, you know, I really want to protect it. So I did an experiment, which I should have done it on another item, of course. But I used this uh, clear coat on top of it and it worked out beautiful. But I was like, ah, you know what, I need to add a second coat. And then as I added a second coat, all of a sudden it must have really like softened up the uh, Alclad stuff. And it cracked it all up. So... I guess, uh, you know, you got to kind of stick to specific brands and do certain things. So I do know that this Spaztec stuff is better with, you know, like this Createx stuff and also with their uh, basic red. And I haven't had a problem with this type of stuff either. And also the bracelets of the Alclad uh, um, Pale Gold, you know, the bracelets. So I do know I can do all that clearing on that. The only thing I'm going to try to do is try to get my coats done now and at least a decent coat and within a half hour. So I'll spray it down really lightly, make sure nothing's cracking, do a nice good coat, and if I feel a need to do another one, I'll do another one, and then pretty much stop, because I think if I come back the next day and try to do another coat, the Spastic might react to it. I'm not really sure. It's something I had to test down the line on another item, but I do know it should work well for this. So remember, always test uh, your products on other items, whether it's just a cheap uh, bus that you have broken next to you, or a spoon or something, just in case that you're worried about mixing brands. But as of with this, I should be pretty good. So I'm gonna get my mask on, we're gonna kick on the booth, and I'm gonna do my clear coating, and then uh, that should pretty much be it for this video. So we'll see what it looks like at the end. All right, so I kicked off the airbrush booth for now because I just kind of want to explain what's going on, but I did about almost a half a can of the clear uh, enamel onto him, and I got a really nice shiny coat. I really love in the way he's looking right now. Uh, so I don't want to push my luck with this at all. I'm going to let him cure for like a week. I'm not going to touch him. I'm not going to try to put the bands on him or anything just to see how things are looking. I just want to let this cure because I have a funny feeling if... I try and take this band and put it on tomorrow. It might still be a little bit too tacky and I might rip some paint off, so I'm not gonna mess with it. But you can see though, having uh, one gold for the Nega bands and another gold for his star on his outfit really breaks up the yellow. So it's always good to kind of try to have different brands and paints of uh, a color, whether it's gold, paint, silvers and stuff, and you can break it up. And you can see nice and shiny, what it does is it brings out the blues a lot. Now, I'm not sure about my camera in the studio. It might look aqua, but in person, it's a really deep, rich, like, cobalt uh, pearlized blue. So it really looks good. Uh, so, like I said, you know, when you have a couple stars up around here, the area where they're not supposed to be, when you turn it, you know, the light and being glossy kind of breaks it up, and it really makes it, like, disappear. So it works out pretty well. So other than that, I'm going to let him cure up. And I think what's going to happen is uh, at the end of the project, I'm going to make a decision on him and Phyla. I might use satin varnish on his hair because I'm not really liking the way it's kind of glossy at the moment. I don't mind if it's got a satin look, uh, but I don't want it flat either. So I think I'm going to go with the uh, satin varnish on both hairs at the end just to kind of make sure they're not super shiny. But we'll see how, uh, you know, I'll make that decision at the end. So... Now that he's going to be set aside and I'm not going to touch him for a week, we're going to finish up this video here. Uh, hopefully you guys like the way he came out. And the next video will probably be the last video. We're going to focus on the base. We're going to focus on his Power Blast Clear Resin for his right hand. We're going to paint up the clear uh, base uh, yellow. And then we're going to try to match the bottom of the base to File of Veil's uh, Space Rocks where I did that purple 
um, interference type of look on that. And so they'll be uniformed and stuff. So like I said, we'll have brother and sister in my uh, display case and they'll pretty much be close of all colors. And it should be uh, one hell of a nice uh, collector centerpiece for my uh, own collection. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, next video, we'll probably finish this out, and hopefully we'll get that up shortly. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll be back with some more videos.